tell us about your Disney years and how that led you to Over the Moon. Well, um, for me, I've animated a lot of different characters and the way uh, I connect with them is really through this spark inside of them that believes the impossible is possible. Like for Ariel, she's a mermaid, but somehow she's gonna walk on land and fall in love with the guy of the legs. I mean, this is crazy, but that's so appealing to me. When I read Audrey Wells' beautiful script uh, and Fei Fei is the vehicle for all of the viewers to go on this journey, um, I saw that same spark of believing the impossible is possible. 12 years old, she's gonna build a rocket to the moon. Walt Disney always talked about the plausible impossible, that there's gotta be something that makes you believe it could happen. Fei Fei is so smart. She knows physics and science and math and, and she's so ingenious in how she pulls all these elements together to build this rocket using fireworks. And, and then there's this other side of her that, uh, that her mom gave her, which is this belief in things that people can't see. Um, the goddess on the dark side of the moon. This was, this was so much fun to be able to um, bring that kind of a character to life. These are the characters I loved animating in the past. And in this case, this was going to be my first film that I was directing. It had to be with that kind of a character. What do you think audiences worldwide will love about this film? I think that I mean, there's a number of things, certainly the music. The music, we did not write it first as a musical, Aubrey didn't, but she loves musicals. Palin Chow loves musicals. Um, when I was reading the script, I was like, it feels like Howard Ashman is speaking in my ear and here's a song, there's a song. These are moments that you can advance the story, put like rockets on, on the story point and move it forward emotionally. Um, these are not needle drop songs. They need to be written with lyrics that are profound. And Audrey seemed to have already written that into the script in some sense. And so that, that was an incredibly important thing that I think that the audience is going to believe in, wonder, in, in a wonderful way. It'll stick in their minds. But I think it's the, the lesson that resonates so deeply, so true, and yet people kind of avoid going there, which is about the loss of people we love, dealing with the pain. I mean, at one point, Fei Fei says, I just want things to go back the way they were. Uh, and you know, who wouldn't say that today in this world of this pandemic where everything is turned upside down, and, but we don't, we don't go backwards, we only go forward in life. And it leads in our movie to the chamber of exquisite sadness, which is kind of a poetic way. We're not talking about these things in an intellectual way. It's a symbolic, emotional journey we're taking you on. And Fei-Fei has to confront her biggest sorrow of losing her mom, but it's a chamber of exquisite sadness because at the other end, you discover joy and love. And that's, that's the message that I want people to have. What was your favorite uh, part of working on the film? Any fun facts? Um, I think probably my favorite part was going to China and discovering what it was like to be Chinese, to, to sit in a family's home in the, at the round table with the grandparents and the aunts and uncles and kids. And that, I hung on to that all the way through because I knew this was gonna be the bookend for us. It was the, the love of food. <laughs> it was the light, the textures, the sounds, the smells. Those are the things that I wanted to communicate um, because I lived it, I experienced it. Uh, there's something, so genuine and real about that. 
that Celine Desrumeaux, my production designer, really worked so hard in creating the sense that people were, were really enjoying that food and living in that world. Um, that's what I wanted to communicate, was, is the true life of China back to the world.